What's up guys? So I figured I'd do another vlog. Uh, this is just gonna be a chest training session. I actually did this back uh, 17 weeks out and this was my friend, Ben Mayfield Smith, who you'll see in a minute in the video, here he is. Uh, so we basically just hit up an early morning session at Old Jim Brendel and Ben isn't particularly following a super structured training clock at the moment. He's basically um, just delegating the appropriate amount of volume to each body part each week. And so his training is varying quite a bit. And seeing as I'm in prep and my training is quite rigid in nature, it worked out pretty well. But uh, usually it's obviously difficult to just uh, train with another person if you're following different training programs. And so uh, the fact that Ben is kind of freestyling his training at the moment, uh, not uh, thoughtlessly, very thoughtfully freestyling his training, I should say, uh, made it quite easy for us to work in with each other and, and do a training session together, which was really good because we've wanted to do one for a while. And we're going to try to hit up a few more throughout uh, the duration that I prep, but uh, it's just a matter of teeing up time and lining up time. The times that I can train are typically times that nobody else can train, uh, but because Ben is also a coach himself and does have some degree of control over his schedule like I do, uh, we both were able to train early in the morning. I believe this is around 5 a.m. So that's typically the time that I like to do my training, at 5 in the morning. And uh, we basically just did a purely chest focus session with a little bit of lateral delt or side delt work toward the very end. So we started off here with a machine chest press, and this one converges at the top. It's a Gym 80 machine chest press. Now when it comes to quality gym equipment, I definitely put prime equipment up the top, gym 80 equipment, and then also, uh, you know, the old school Nautilus stuff and a couple other things. Arsenal Strength make great equipment, but <clears throat> unfortunately in Australia, we don't have access to a large variety of high quality equipment. However, this is an official gym 80 training facility in Australia, well, Jim Brendel, and it's quite new. And so we were testing out all the new shiny toys and uh, this machine is by far one of our favorites, not just mine, but also Ben's favorites. Uh, just the way that it converges at the top, it allows you to really, really load that pec in its fully shortened position in a press, which is typically difficult to do uh, unless you're doing dumbbells. But the fact that this is a machine and it's very smooth allows you to take a lot of the uh, stability requirements out of the movement and you can just focus more on getting a good SFR, otherwise known as stimulus to fatigue ratio. And uh, after that, we moved on to this higher incline uh, machine chest press. Similar deal, it's a Gym 80 uh, machine and it also converges at the top. And so you just get more bang for your buck when you do a press or a pressing movement, I should say, that uh, converges at the top and then uh, comes apart on the way down. So when it comes to chest movements, uh, I'm a, a sucker for any kind of incline variation. And I'm pretty sure Ben enjoys incline work too. Not too sure if he enjoys it as much as I do, but I really, really love this machine. And a lot of it has to do with my structure. I've just always been stronger on incline presses. When it comes to flat presses and decline presses, I've definitely really had to work hard to get better at them on. Uh, and really work on my pressing mechanics with exercise physiologists for a number of years. But uh, it's definitely at a point to which I'm quite happy with how I perform all my pressing movements. And my chest has definitely started to develop and grow uh, notably more in the past year since I've, I suppose, fixed up my technique on a lot of presses. And uh, getting a nice little bit of a pump in this exercise, you can see the veins kind of popping through my arms. Uh, still very early in prep at this point. Currently, while I'm recording this voiceover, I'm actually uh, just under 15 weeks out, but this was from 17 weeks out, so a couple weeks back. And uh, I was really enjoying this session. Here we are, just giving each other a little bit of a spot, getting some force reps out. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things, like training partners can be really constructive and conducive to your progress in the gym, or they can be detrimental. Uh, so it's really important that you kind of choose your training partners carefully and wisely. I don't just train with anybody. And similarly, I don't just train at any time or at any gym. It has to be a good location with good quality equipment. And it has to be in the time window in which I can train and focus, which is 5 a.m. And that's why I generally can't really train with anybody. Uh, nobody's willing to train at that hour of the day. And unfortunately, I'm not willing to cater to other people. Um, and, and Ben's very similar and so I would completely respect if he wasn't able to train at this hour of the morning but 
we're both early birds. We're both up nice and early. We have good morning routines. We have good uh, sleep hygiene. And uh, so we're always trying to stay on top of that stuff and, and further dial it in. Uh, Ben's a, a very disciplined guy. He's uh, a good friend and uh, a respected professional in the industry. I, uh, I have a lot of respect for him, hold him in high regards, and uh, it was really, really good to train with him because he, I guess he has a little bit of a sadistic side to himself, just like I do when it comes to my training. And uh, I, I really do like to push things quite hard. I like to take things close to failure, and so does he. And so due to our similarities, it makes us uh, highly compatible when it comes to being training partners. And uh, it's, it, it's definitely uh, handy. Whereas if you're somebody who you know, goes quite hard out when they're training and your training partner is one of those individuals that kind of slacks off a bit, yeah, it can work. Although if you live with a cripple, you develop a limb, as the saying says. And uh, so if you're just constantly training with people that are half-assing their training, sooner or later, it's going to have some sort of a deleterious effect on your training effort, your training output, and your ability to uh, take your training to the level that you want to take it to. And I'm not trying to imply that you need to be hardcore or you need to take everything to failure all the time. That would be completely moronic of myself. Uh, you don't have to go to failure every single session. You don't have to go to failure all the time or every week. You don't have to be quote unquote hardcore. You just have to be committed to your training if your training is something that you take seriously. Make sure that you and your training partner both have training in the same position in terms of your overall priorities in life so if, if your training partner prioritizes training to be one of the utmost important things in their life then you'd want to have training in a similar position in your order of hierarchy when it comes to your priorities because if you don't then there's going to be a discrepancy there and it's going to be difficult to be on the same level and get a lot out of the whole training partner system so just a little bit of uh, food for thought for anybody out there who is wondering, I suppose, whether they should get a training partner or whether they should continue to train on their own, uh, what, what the main difference between the two is. And uh, I'll definitely say now that having a good training partner can definitely make a difference in terms of helping push you, uh, especially on the days that you don't feel like it. But in saying that too, uh, you shouldn't be relying on your training partner for motivation and, and to push you. Uh, if that's the case, you're eventually going to drag your training partner down and although they'll be conducive and beneficial to you, you're going to be essentially applying the opposite to them and uh, they're not going to appreciate it in the long run. So yeah, I uh, figured I'd just uh, do a little bit of a voiceover, but uh, the training session itself is quite explanatory. After those presses, we did the, uh, the fly, the plate-loaded fly, and that was a fantastic exercise. I absolutely love that plate-loaded fly machine, but... You need to be quite careful because uh, it's deceiving. I think we went 10 kilo per side, a 10 kilo plate per side, and that was enough to gas us quite a bit. I think now, because I've been doing it for a few weeks, I can actually get up to about 15 kilo a side, but that is incredibly hard, and I am focusing all out when I'm doing that. But uh, here we are just finishing off with a little bit of side delt work. We did some behind body cable lateral raises. Just because lateral raising from behind the body and up out and forward a little bit as you get toward the top of each rep allows you to kind of align the tension um, the force with the actual orientation of the fibers of the side delt better than if you were to do it from in front of your body so it actually lines the tension up uh, in, in the direction in which the fibers actually uh, attach on your body so you're able to actually get more uh, i suppose stimulus through the lateral head it's not necessary but it's a little thing i like to do